I'm delighted to welcome Didier Bria, the new and reigning world quizzing champion. Congratulations, Didier, and welcome. Oh, many thanks. In the last few days, have you been able to get your head around what you've achieved? Well, basically on Monday, I went back to work as usual, so it doesn't make any change at all. <laughs> <laughs> Just have plenty of requests on Facebook of friendship, so that's a bit weird in a way, but I think if you are going to be slightly in the public eye on the quizzing scene, on the quizzing scene, it's something you have to accept. Uh, but yeah, a certain degree of fame comes with it. But in terms of um, your own kind of how you think about yourself, you know, for years you've been doing the World Quizzing Championships since 2010. Now you're the world champion. Do you think about yourself differently? Uh, it's a bit weird because I've never really. Um, never really wanted to win it. It was not something at the top of the list. I just want to, to finish in the top 10. Mm. I'm quite happy with that. For many years, I was happy with that. Uh, if I managed to finish in top three, well, great. But there was never really a will on my behalf to say, I want to win it. It's, it's not really uh, something that I could ex expect in the past uh, or even now. It was a surprise uh, more than anything else. As you said, quite a wonderful surprise um, mm. to have. Um, could you tell us, for the benefit of people who don't know anything about you, other than that you're the new champion, you know, how long you've been quizzing, how you got involved in it and that sort of thing? Um, I think it was all a bit bizarre in the first place. Uh, I, I learned on, on the internet somewhere in the past on the quizzing website, there was a World Cuisine Championship back in 2010. I think it's someone, an American guy called Paul Pele, mm -hmm. who put me in touch with Chris Jones. And Chris Jones told me there was a venue in Peterborough uh, back in June 2010. And I went there and I did the quiz and um, I quite enjoyed it, even though there was more wrong answer uh, or blank than anything else, but I quite enjoy it in a way. Mm. I find the challenge quite interesting at the time. Mm. So I decided to carry on. And, and that's really getting in at the deep end. You know, a lot of people will start with a Grand Prix or something like that and then go into the World Championship. You went straight in at the World Championships. You came 198th, which any... any uh, placing within the top 200 is is good um but what was it about that quiz that made you think i want to do more of that uh the main thing when i was doing it i was there i was reading each question i say i know that but absolutely don't know the answer you know the, the, the way that feeling you think oh i've seen that before but i could not nail it there was a lot of question like this and I, I, I thought I was quite knowledgeable at the time. I realized I was not, but uh, in the quizzing book, I was not. So from, from that point, I tried to improve my knowledge, and especially the, what the recall, what we call recall, because mm -hmm. that is the most important thing. If you've got knowledge, you can't recall it. It's a bit pointless in quizzing uh, competition, any quiz. Uh, so Yeah, so the next year you came back, and you were 57, so big mm. improvement. What did you put that down to? Was that more practicing the format or a uh, recall? I actually it was more like um, more like both, basically. Mm. Uh, practicing the format, basically, try to uh, to basically uh, how do you say that? Um, try to figure out what I should know. Mm. You know, all those, uh, by example, all those Chinese dynasty, things like this, all the basic, you know, mm. the stuff you try to remember from time to time because it tend to, to, you tend to forget, but it's quite easy to, uh, to work them out. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, yeah, I work the format and I work on my knowledge and I work on my recall by doing a lot of repetition. Uh, sometimes I do the same quiz two or three times in the same week. Like these uh, things tend, tend to stick to my mind mm. better than doing it once every uh, three months. Mm. So it's just a uh, way, way to practice as well. 
you you clearly took the learning from that first uh, attempt 57th in your second 23rd in your uh, third go and thereafter you had a remarkable streak um 10th in 2013 then 13th 12th 8th broke into the top 10 second 7th uh, 7th 11th uh second last year and then this year winning you know it's it's it takes quite a lot to get to that sort of level, clearly. But what sort of work does it take to keep at that level? I think it must depend on the individual as well. Uh, for me, I, at the beginning, the first years, I spent a lot of time doing a lot of quizzing, trying to mm. wrote, I wrote a lot of questions, mm. uh, tried to put myself in situation, you see what I mean? Mm. I did that quite a lot for the five uh, the first five or six years. And after that, I tried to use that that background to grow on it without doing too much. Uh, because now I do far less than I used to. So basically, I'm just using what I know from my past experience in quizzing, and I just cultivate it, adding bits and bobs from time to time. Mm. But I don't, I don't do uh, much work, uh, to be honest. I'm not. Uh, I don't have much concentration beyond two hours. So I'll, I just do a little bit from every day than a lot in one go. That's depressing for somebody like me to hear you say <laughs> you don't do very much work and you still wind up um, champion. But I guess, do you have an affinity then with the, the, the type of content that you get in the World Championships? Yeah, I think this year and last year, I started to not to understand... Uh, I uh, understand the, the setup, but there's a lot of questions you can expect. For mm -hmm. example, this year you had two Olympics game, two Olympics game in uh, in 12 months. Mm -hmm. It was bound you will get two or three questions. I think you don't need to do a lot of work to nail the most important thing into the uh, the, the important thing from the Olympic games. Okay, the two mm -hmm. questions I think were a bit. Uh, Bit difficult, but there were two questions I've, I've wrote myself. I've wrote uh, in the running of the World Peace Championship, for example. Mm. But there's a lot of questions. They come back more or less uh, not year in year out, but uh, on a regular basis. Even though this year was a bit more difficult. So you you came second in 2017. At that point, when you've come second, were you tempted to think, okay? I'll really work very hard to try and win it. Or did you just keep that same mindset of, uh, of, of a, a balance of what you were doing? The thing is, in 2017s, I was working harder than now, basically. Mm. And I say, oh, probably that, that's it. I've reached my point. I can't go beyond. Mm. Because the other quiz, I think the other quiz had much more to to offer than I did at the time. So I didn't really bother to, to see if I could go further. I just, I'm happy where I am. Mm. So I just, I would just carry on. You're in your heart to see what's come along. I'm not very fussy in that, uh, that respect. You, you, you mentioned about sort of anticipating questions uh, that might come up and also a knowledge of what's come up in the past. Was that the basis of your preparation for this yeah. tournament? Yes. Uh, re every time when there's a World Quiz Championship, you always go back to the previous sets. I know you, you need to have done a lot of them to have a lot of sets, but if you got five or six sets, it's much easier to look at it and to see the trend, basically. There's always a trend. Even this year, there was a new trend. Like There was some question about Spain, in history, I think was quite new, but usually there's always a trend of uh, question. Mm. But it, yeah, the World Quiz Championship, I think you must have noticed it has changed in the last 10, 15 years. Mm. In the, at the beginning when you, you did it, there was a lot of chestnut, nice bit more esoteric at time. Yeah, yeah, a lot fewer chestnuts now. Certainly that's how mm. I found it. Um, mm. Thinking about this, quiz uh you were remarkably consistent and strong obviously across all genres um scoring 20 or more in everyone except think entertainment yeah 
when you look back at the paper, were there any questions that you particularly were happy with getting and any uh, ones that got away that really still annoy you? There was a, obviously there was one or two questions I was happy to, to get, especially there's one question in uh, uh, art and culture. I more or less uh, had given up on that question because I, I told myself straight away, that doesn't ring a bell. On have a bit of time at the end, I read it three times and suddenly the answer uh, popped into my mind, just like, not just like this, but I say, oh, it could be that. And I've wrote it down. Mm. But usually on that set, I think most of the stuff I wrote down were correct. And there was a lot of stuff that were blank mm. because I knew absolutely no clue at all. I was not going to spend time on it because it was pointless. Better to focus on the stuff in your, uh, uh, in your, uh, how do you say that? Uh, the stuff you may know, or you should know, or you think you know. Mm. I think it's the advantage when you have been quizzing for a long time, there's a lot, you are a bit more certain about the stuff you know and the stuff you don't know. Mm. So Yeah, so technique really helped you in terms of not wasting yeah. your time and focusing yeah. on what you, you knew you could get. Mm. Uh, any, any questions that really annoy you that you didn't get right though? Yeah, I think as usual in the second part, because you're probably a bit more tired than in the first part, mm. there's always one or two easy ones that can always go, manage to go away. Seeing I missed the one with the Red Bull, I'm yeah. sure I would have been at the beginning of the quiz, I would have nailed it. But at the end of the quiz with the tiredness, type of things just get muddled up in your mind and, mm. and you can't nail it. So, but... Uh, well, now I feel good because I got a question right that the world champion didn't. So, you know, <laughs> way little victory. <laughs> um, but um, it's, it's, it's interesting to me when we look at winners and, and I think what makes a champion. And in your case, obviously, you've got um, your, your French and have the background of, of France and living in mainland Europe and, and sort of that education system and life experience. You now live in the UK, which I'm sure enriches you in other ways. You've mm. got a, a scientific background in that you're a pharmacist or is it a chemist? Yeah, a chemist. Chemist, sorry. So you've got a scientific background as a chemist and then also every, the, the kind of more humanities and and pop culture stuff is also accessible to you do you feel that there's a a real kind of advantage to being somebody who's more diverse in their life experience as you are uh i think given the eight example just to go back to the world question because we've got science if you got a scientific background it seems to be slightly easier mm. than uh by example than lifestyle or uh I don't know, uh, entertainment, where lifestyle entertainment is a bit more organic. When science is not really organic, you need to, uh, you need to have a bit of uh, knowledge of it, like uh, the way he works. And, uh, that helps a lot, I think. I think if you don't have that, uh, that basic knowledge of science, you may struggle to get uh, 20 points. Unlike all the journals now, towards the final score you can't really say i'm going to get 10 points in science i'm gonna be okay so you, you need to have a not strong everywhere but to cover the basis and uh, the, your weak yeah. topics yeah did you find that this rule change affected you in any way did it affect how you played your mindset mm -hmm. It affected me in a positive way because I told myself now I need to focus on entertainment or media. That mm. Usually they are my weak, uh, my weak spots. So I did a bit more work, if I can call it that, uh, work. But mm. I did um, the pop culture challenge on, um, and that was uh, quite a big help because it helped me to, uh, to focus a bit more on those uh, low broad topics like uh, music, uh, television. Even sometimes a bit uh, pretty, uh, pretty center uh, or glocentric, it helps to put your mind into uh, into situation. That's that's a good tip. You know, getting experience elsewhere. What what is your favorite form of quizzing? 
Uh, actually, that format is my preferred format. It's the one I like the most. For example, a format like the UQC, I find it difficult because sometimes the, the answer doesn't jump into my mind straight away. And like you got 10 or 12 minutes to, to give 12 answers. If you, it's not like if you got one hour, uh, you see what I mean. So I find yeah. it difficult at times. So, so even, even though the subject matter may be similar to the World Championships, yeah. it's the format tests yeah. you in a different way. Yeah. You you find yourself less good at it. It's mm -hmm. interesting. Things like Mimir and Buzzer Quiz, how do you feel about those? Uh, Mimir, I like doing the Mimir, but sometimes in the 30 seconds, I find it difficult to, uh, to recall. I've noticed when you get older, it's more difficult uh, it's more difficult to, to remember stuff at times on the, the speed. I think there's like buzzer quiz, you need a bit of a speed, uh, speed of recall, speed of action. When we get older, unfortunately, you lose a bit of that. Uh, so, but I quite enjoy them. But I think Mimi is more like a young people's game in a way, I think, because of that, uh, you need to be fast uh, somehow. And there are different, there are tactics to it as well about yeah. when to, to guess. Mm -hmm. um, now, you've had a turbulent slash interesting last couple of years. Um, you were diagnosed with cancer and have been treated for that. Has that affected how you view quizzing against the rest of your life? Uh, actually, it's a very good question because I think it's not just because it's cancer. It's a, if you tell me you got a big, a big situation in your life that make uh, to change everything, mm -hmm. you need something to to focus on an happy an happy area in your life where you need to do something that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was quizzing. Other people, it's music or uh, mm -hmm. you see what I mean. You need a hobby. Mm -hmm. And the, the doctor told me, well, before I'm putting my finger, he asked me whether I was a musician. I said, no, he said, it's okay, then you will be all right. <laughs> so uh, quizzing, it's okay for that. It's just, it's quite helpful in a way because you tend to forget your problem. So you threw yourself into it. Um, did you find yourself playing more? Because you said you didn't study uh, much more, but did you find yourself playing more? Yeah, yeah, because I've got a bit more time because I'm working from home. Mm. And I've got a bit more time, so I play a bit more. I've done quite a lot of Mimir uh, lately. Because at the beginning, for the Mimir of online quizzing, I used to write some questions. After that, I said, maybe I would like to take part. So I started to participate on uh, But yeah, I've got more time on my hand to participate in those type of uh, competition. It's interesting you mentioned writing, because you've also written questions for competitions yeah. um i got you to write questions for the celtic nations um yeah. competition um, i'm still doing it uh, yeah do you find writing questions helps you in the learning process oh yeah definitely because you have to uh you need you need to dig a, you need to dig a bit deeper you know you can't just write the same questions you need to make take some notes you need to read about it you need to, to, to check if it's balanced. Uh, you know, there's, it's not just, it's a different um, viewpoint of quizzing. Uh, mm. I know some people don't like writing. Some people only like writing. I think personally, I, I like the, the balance of both mm. because uh, it can help you to put yourself into a situation of, uh, as a quizzer, you take the question and say, if I was a quiz writer, would I write the question like this? So, what type of question I will write. Yeah, it's, for me, I find it helpful. So if um, if somebody was coming to you today, and I'm, I'm going to be that person, and said, I want to really improve my performances in the World Quizzing Championships, what advice would you give them? Uh, I think it depends as well the starting point on the individual. Basically, you probably you need to... Uh, to do a little bit every day, if you can, mm -hmm. because I think your brain needs practice in that way, the repetition. Mm -hmm. Because if you do a lot in one go before a competition or just from time to time, it's more difficult to acquaint yourself with the, 
with the with the question, the answers, the knowledge. So that works for me. I think it's just mm. a little bit every day is better than a lot of time just once. So as well, it's good sometimes to look at uh, some quizzes online like um, uh, University Challenge, Mastermind, uh, on uh, what is called the uh, Brain of Britain. Okay, mm. it's, it's a bit anglo-centric. But just help for some of the basic as well. Uh, mm. Now you've done Mastermind, haven't you? Um, oh yes, yes, I've done Mastermind. How did you find Mastermind do, doing a TV quiz in your second language? Uh, actually, I remember Pat Gibson was training training me over the phone uh, for the Mastermind uh, back in 2012. He was firing question over the phone uh, at the time, uh, but. For me, it was just a question of concentration because, mm. because it's my second language. So you need to focus to be sure you're not going to miss uh, the important uh, mm. keyword in the question. But to be honest, I don't really remember much of it. Uh, my, my experience, just after you have been asked the question, you don't remember much of it. I don't know whether you had that experience. Uh, absolutely, like, yeah. Like you've got a massive blank, you know, you, it's like um, uh, you go for uh, general anesthetic <laughs> and you can't remember what happened. Yeah, it was a bit like this. Uh. Yeah, no, that, that's very true. I, I think I said before on the channel that after one appearance on Mastermind, uh, I swore blind that everybody else had had a pop music question apart from me. Yeah. When I watched it back, it was my first question and I got it right yeah. without even thinking. And it just... <laughs> Was it in my head? I just yeah. couldn't even remember having done it. It's so it, it is a weird experience. Now you've achieved uh, winning the world championship. What what is your next aim? Is it retaining the world championship? Is there something else you want to win? No, because I think that's going to be difficult. It's going to put a lot of pressure on myself as well. Mm. It's very important as well not to put too much pressure on yourself because it's just. I consider it just a game. It's not that important in a way. It just has to be fun. So if you put yourself under a lot of pressure, I don't think you're going to enjoy it. Mm. I don't think you will uh, get anywhere fast, basically. <laughs> so um, I think there's a lot of young quizzers these days. I think uh, maybe this year is the year where we see a change in the uh, change of the names at the top. I could be wrong, of course, but I think we could see a different names next year at the top. So maybe it was the good year to get at the top. Uh, but we will see. Uh... We will. You're right. There are, there are some very good, talented, uh, younger quizzes going through. Dow Jackson has had a couple of very mm. good years in the World Championships. Uh, Evan Lynch broke into the top 10. Mm. And there are great quizzes all around Europe um, who are stepping forward out of this um, online mm. era having done so much mm. more quizzing and so much more international quizzing. Um, for you then, uh, when you look back on this year's World Championship, you know, what are the emotions and, and kind of thoughts that you have about what you've achieved? Uh, actually, it was a bit weird because I knew it was a good score, but I was not certain it was the top three score. Mm. So when uh, I think Ronnie Swiggers uh, send me a message on Messenger telling me that the top score in Belgium won 176. So I said, oh, that I'm, uh, I'm probably, I've got, so I'm not very far away. So we're waiting for another score in the States, I think Victoria, mm. to be sure uh, that, but it's, it's a long process over the afternoon, you know, mm. because we are one of the first to take it. So you have to wait gradually mm. to realize, I think you need to, bit of time to realize what you have done mm. because you see the good quiz you see the score and say oh that my score is much better than this score so I'm, I could mm. be a, you know I could be a, right at the top so and when you found out that you had actually won it did you celebrate did you crack open a bottle of bubbly? no no <laughs> no not really no <laughs> it was very much a miserable day on Sunday not because of that because I was very tired mm. my uh, partner's daughter wake me up at four o'clock in the morning with, uh, with her friend so 
I was a bit grumpy and I couldn't fall back asleep. So in the morning, uh, all day I was uh, I was tired. So <laughs> I was a bit grumpy. So, but yeah, my partner is very happy about it. So <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm sure they're very very proud of you and, and rightly so. Um, you've had also quite a degree of success in UK quizzing um, in Grand Prix in the last few years. As a as a Frenchman living in England, that that that's quite something. I mean, how, what do you put that down to? Well, that is um, now I've got some experience. I've been doing Grand Prix since 2012, 2010, mm. more or less. I've I've been watching a lot of Mastermind. Mm a lot of uh, you know, Brand of Britain, University Challenge. So I've got a good curriculum of British stuff, okay? My entertainment is not very good, but that is normal because you can't watch everything on TV or watch mm. stuff well before my time, if I can say that before my time. <laughs> but, but the rest is, uh, you can catch up very quickly. Sport, science, physical world is quite neutral in a way. Mm. Life science, something you can pick up very quickly as well. Entertainment, is, I find it a bit more difficult, but art and culture and civilization is something you can pick up very quickly as well. But I've been doing it for 12 years, so I find it, for me, it's not a second nature, but almost. Mm. I find it easier than French stuff, to be honest. <laughs> and you do play internationally with the, the French um, quiz team at the European mm. Championships. What do you think... Um, if anything, this this win might do for French quizzing. I don't know to be honest because uh, uh, as, uh, I've not really thought about that. Uh, I don't think it will make much difference to be honest because I wanted more or less to semi retire of that uh, uh, A team to go in the B team, but now probably I will have to stay in the A team for the next uh, competition. Uh, but uh, because I find it, uh, for me, I find it very tiring, the, the 100 question. Uh, but you, you know you have done yeah. it. So it's like, uh, it's like going through the, the meal, basically. Uh, mm. on, uh, I, it's not the case anymore. But in the past, I was more or less the only English speaker. So I have to translate for everybody. So yeah, I did an extra layer of uh, work. Mm. But yeah, I think... I think uh, Without me, anyway, they are just, uh, it's, there's a massive improvement. Uh, mm. But like everybody else, there's a lot of quiz online now, Mimi, so they take part. And, uh, I think that is a good thing. Yeah. Well, 2022 has been your year. Um, <laughs> there's still more quizzing to come. Um, but um, congratulations, Didier, a very popular winner. Uh, and uh, yeah, really impressive victory. So, um, so congratulations once more on what you've achieved. Yeah, thank you very much.